The Super Smash Bros. series is known for its large roster of different fighters from across several different gaming franchises. While of course a playable roster of fighters is the best place any character could land, that's not the only way a character can be represented in the series. One of the second most sought after positions a character could obtain in the Super Smash Bros. series is becoming an assist trophy or Pokeball Pokemon if they're from that series. While not playable, these represent the character or Pokemon they summon by having them help the fighter that picked up the item. Currently in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there are 59 assist trophy characters in 55 Pokeball Pokemon. That's a pretty good count, however that's not every assist trophy or Pokeball in the Smash series. Remember how Smash Ultimate's slogan was everyone is here? Well that's a lie. Okay, well obviously that refers to the playable roster, but the assist trophy and Pokemon rosters have actually lost quite a few characters over the series. In fact, there are 31 Pokeball Pokemon and 16 assist trophies that were once in the Smash series that didn't make it into Ultimate. Today, I want to take a look at these 47 characters and cover what they did, maybe why some of them were cut, and if I would want to see them return. So if you enjoyed this look at the cut assist trophies and Pokemon in Smash Ultimate, then please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right into Smash 64. Out of Smash 64's 13 Pokeball Pokemon, only 4 of them made it into Ultimate. That's a shockingly low amount, generally a lot of stuff carries over from Smash 64 to the present. In our little cut series so far, we saw most of its items return and most of its stages return, so the fact that almost 70% of the Pokemon were cut was a bit surprising. The only 4 that survived from this game into Ultimate are Meowth, Goldeen, Snorlax, and Mew, and 2 of those literally do nothing. So who were these 9 Pokemon to get cut? Well first off we have Charizard, and I think it's pretty obvious obvious why he would have been cut. Obviously Charizard is now a fighter in Smash Ultimate through the Pokemon Trainer. It makes total sense that he'd be a Pokeball Pokemon first though, I mean he's one of the most iconic Pokemon in the franchise. If they couldn't get him on the playable roster, he just had to be included in this roster. But what exactly did Charizard do? Well he would use the move Flamethrower to deal damage to an opponent. He would turn his head to get both sides of him, though the range of the fire wasn't huge. Overall a pretty solid Pokeball, but it obviously doesn't need to come back. Oh also as you can see by the footage, he was also in Melee. I'm only going to cover each Pokemon on their first appearance in the Smash series though, so this video doesn't get too repetitive. Our next Pokemon is Blastoise, who similar to Charizard was in Smash 64 in Melee before being cut in Brawl. He would use Hydro Pump, which would rapidly shoot out small bursts of water straight in front of him to deal damage. Also let me just say, I think Smash 64 using sprites for the Pokemon Pokemon just looks hilarious. I mean he does not blend in at all. I'm guessing he was also cut for the same reason as Charizard, that being Squirtle became playable. Obviously Blastoise is an evolved Squirtle, but I think they probably wanted to have a nice variety of Pokemon by the time they got to Brawl, so he was cut. Beach Drill is our first Pokemon to only ever appear in Smash 64, being cut from the series in Melee. Upon being summoned, a swarm of Beedrill will use Takedown and come rushing in toward the opponent, dealing some knockback. Also, I know I just commented on the sprites, but come on, Beedrill just looks so goofy, look at him. If I were to guess why Beedrill was cut, I'm assuming it was because a very similar Pokemon functionality-wise gets added in Melee from Gen 2. We'll get to them in a bit, but to keep up diversity, Beedrill was sadly cut. I'm fine with this as well though, we have enough Gen 1 Pokemon in Ultimate as is. Clefairy was in Smash 64 in Melee and could use Metronome. What did that do? Literally everything. Yeah, so Clefairy could just use every single other Pokemon's move. This is a really cool gimmick, but I also totally understand why it was cut. It was probably much easier to include early on when there were only 13 Pokemon as opposed to the 55 we have now. I don't see Clefairy ever coming back, but this would probably be the Pokemon I want back the most. Oh, also I swear this is the last time, but Clefairy's sprite is just so funny. Her idle sprite as the attack just spawns is hilarious. Clefairy. In Melee, Metronome worked differently though, where she could just use a bunch of random moves. This is significantly lamer than the Smash 64 version, so I'm choosing to ignore it. Brief aside from the cut Pokemon is I want to mention that Meowth used to work a bit differently. While both Smash 64 and Ultimate see him use Payday, in Smash 64 the coins would circle around him rather than being thrown in front of him. I prefer the Ultimate version, so this is a good change. Back to the actual cuts though, Onyx only ever appears in Smash 64, where he will use Rock Throw. This will cause rocks to rain down from above, which will obviously damage opponents. This is the first one that I don't really have an exact guess why he was cut, but I'm just gonna assume it's due to wanting more non-Gen 1 Pokemon. Personally, I don't find this move that exciting, so I'm fine with the cut. Like really, this is just about the most generic rock move I can think of. Hitmonlee is another Pokemon exclusive to Smash 64. He uses Jump Kick, and get this, does a Jump Kick towards an opponent. Like Onyx, this is also pretty generic, so I think cutting it makes sense to get some more diversity. Coughing is a bit more interesting though. He uses Smog and will spawn in a poison cloud around him to deal damage. While not the most exciting move once again, Coughing is a pretty iconic Pokemon and this move fits him quite well, so I'd be fine seeing it come back. His reasoning for getting cut is pretty obvious though, but we'll get to that once we get to Melee. Starmie uses Swift, where it'll shoot out a ton of stars forward to deal rapid damage to anyone in front of it. Now I know what you may be thinking, isn't this in Ultimate? No stupid, that's its pre-evolution star you! 
you're a bunch of idiots. Okay, but seriously, I have no clue why they decided to change Starmie to Staryu in Melee, but it's stuck ever since. Obviously, they should only have one, so the cut makes sense, but the change in the first place is really odd. But our final Pokeball Pokemon for Smash 64 was Chansey. It does nothing. Okay, only with items off. If items are on, though, it'll spawn eggs that contain items or explosions. I'm guessing it was cut and brawl because of the items thing, though. That might not be it, but that's just my guess. But anyways, since assist trophies weren't added until brawl, that means we're done with Smash 64, so now it's time to move on to Melee. Now, if you thought 64 had a lot of cut Pokemon, Melee brings the count of cut Pokemon up from 9 to 13. We're also going to be looking at Pokemon from not only Gen 1, but also Gen 2 as well. Since we're going in Pokedex order though, we do have to run through our Gen 1 Pokemon first. Starting us off, we have Venusaur, which is of course the final of the Gen 1 starter trio. Honestly, it's kind of funny he wasn't there in Smash 64, really shows how much more popular the other two are. Anyway, in Melee, he'll use Earthquake, definitely a move I heavily associate with Venusaur. It's pretty dang good though, causing any grounded opponents to go flying. He lasts for a long time too, so this is almost guaranteed damage. I assume he was cut for the same reason the other starters were, as Ivysaur became playable in Brawl. Once again, I'm okay with this cut. Our next Pokemon is actually a replacement, as Coughing evolved between games to become Weezing. He acts the exact same though, so this is just a visual difference. It was also only for one game as he was cut in Brawl. Personally, I prefer Coughing over Weezing, so if either of them ever did return, I'd rather have Coughing. I don't think they will since Gen 1 doesn't need more representation, but I'm just saying. Now our next two are Articuno and Zapdos, which I'm including together as they're part of the Legendary Bird Trio. In Ultimate, only Moltres was able to survive, sadly losing both of its pals in Brawl. Articuno will fly in place and use Icy Wind, which will freeze opponents and send them flying into the Blast Zone. Zapdos will use Thundershock and will summon a ton of electricity to damage opponents, though it won't deal much knockback. I'm assuming these two were cut since having all three of the legendary birds is a bit much, so just keeping it to one is pretty fair. Plus a few other Pokemon now have similar attacks to these guys. That's it for the Gen 1 Pokemon of Melee, so the rest of these cuts are from Gen 2. Chikorita is a reasonable inclusion, seeing as they were the grass starter of Gold and Silver. In both Melee and Brawl, they'll use Razor Leaf, which will throw out a bunch of leaves forward at their opponents. Now, if you've played Ultimate, you know that this is basically the exact same functionality that Snivy now has. Snivy being the Gen 5 starter makes sense to continue on Chikorita's legacy, and I think most people agree that Snivy is a much more popular starter. So personally, I'm happy to replace Chikorita with Snivy. The other Gen 2 starter, Cyndaquil, just looks really funny. Basically, he does a flip and shoots out fire from the explosion out of his back with Flamethrower. The animation is pretty funny and unique with this one, so I'm pretty sad he was cut. Cyndaquil is still a fairly popular starter Pokemon today, so I'd be more than happy to see him make a comeback. Peekaboo is pretty much the most generic Pokemon you could get in Melee. He will just run at the opponent and use Tackle. They probably just wanted to include him since Meryl was a fairly popular Pokemon, but didn't really have anything special in mind for him. His functionality was later given to Eevee and sort of Fletchling, and with Eevee being more popular and Fletchling being more recent, I think that's fair. Plus, I like Fletchling more than Meryl, but that's just me. Unknown is definitely the Pokemon cut that I think is the weirdest from Melee. It acts as Beedrill's replacement, as all of the unknown use Takedown in a massive stream towards the opponent. While I was typing my script, my brother also mentioned that, er, um, Unknown can only learn hidden power, so thanks to him for that. I like Unknown doing this more than Beedrill since this gets to show off all of the different Unknown letters. Due to its many different letter forms, Unknown is still a pretty well-known Pokemon to this day, so the fact that it was cut is pretty surprising to me. There's nothing that much like it later on, so I'm definitely on board with this possibly coming back. Wobbuffet is another Pokemon I'm shocked has a return. It uses counter and will attack anyone that attacks it first. That makes perfect sense for Wobbuffet, and the only Pokemon kind of like that in Ultimate is Spupa. They just stun people though, so really I don't see a reason Wobbuffet was cut. Considering they are also one of the most popular Pokemon in the series, as they're basically the number 2 Team Rocket Pokemon in the anime besides Meowth, I think they absolutely deserve to be here. Of all the Gen 2 Pokemon, this is the one that I think should return the most. Porygon 2, like Meryl, also uses Tackle. Theirs is a bit more powerful though. This is also a pretty generic Pokemon, so the cut makes sense. Our last three are all legendaries. They made sense to include at the time, but definitely became redundant as the series went on. Like the legendary Kanto birds, the legendary beasts from Johto were all originally represented. In Ultimate though, only Entei and Suicune survived, leaving Raikou as the only cut of the three. He just electrifies the floor with Spark, so of the three, he's definitely the lamest. I should also mention that Suicune was changed quite a bit, as in Melee he uses Blizzard as opposed to Aurora Beam. This would just freeze anyone nearby as opposed to the massive and deadly beam seen in every Smash game since. Hoa was the box legendary for Pokemon Gold, so it making an appearance alongside Lugia made a ton of sense. It will fly into the background and use Sacred Fire. This will cause a massive fire meteor to come slamming down on an opponent for some massive damage. While I do think it's quite cool looking, way more than Lugia's, I do sort of understand why Ho-Oh was the one to get caught. While Ho-Oh is probably the more popular of the two, having another Firebird on top of Moltres would be a bit much. I'd probably be fine with Ho-Oh coming back, but it's definitely a more understandable cut. And the final Pokemon is Celebi. They do nothing. Alright, well that's it for Melee, now it's time for our biggest game in terms of cut things, Brawl. 
Brawl brings with it two more generations worth of Pokemon, Generation 3 and Generation 4. Since Brawl didn't add any Gen 1 or 2 Pokemon, all of our cuts will be from the new generations. Starting us off, we have another starter being Torchic. It will use Fire Spin, causing there to be damaging flames around it. While not the most exciting gimmick ever, it certainly works. I'm not really sure why they decided to cut Torchic, seeing as the Blaziken line is still quite popular to this day, so I'd be alright with it coming back. Gulpin is our next Pokemon, and he'll use Swallow. Was that the bite? This is a pretty unique gimmick, though Gulpin is far from the most iconic Pokemon, so I understand the cut. Ultimate also has Mimikyu now, a significantly more popular Pokemon that functions very similarly, so I sadly don't imagine Gulpin will ever come back. Onto the Gen 3 Legendaries, we have two more cuts. Groudon of course appears alongside the other box legendary of Ruby and Sapphire, Kyogre. Out of every legendary Pokemon they have ever added though, Groudon might just be the single worst implemented one. Yes, in my opinion, worse than the ones that do nothing because at least that's the point. Groudon here will use Overheat, so anyone that touches him will take damage. That might sound good, except for the fact that he stays perfectly still. Bruh. I mean, he literally just stands there. Oh, oh, he's letting out a little roar- uh, Oh, well, back to standing. Yeah, this just looks stupid, so I'm glad it was cut. Groudon as a Pokemon is cool, but with this move, I don't really need him to come back. Finally, for Gen 3, we have Jirachi who does nothing. Time for Gen 4. Starting us off, we of course have another starter with Pipla. It will use Surf and push people off the stage if they got caught in it. Now if this looks familiar, don't worry, you haven't lost your marbles, it's because in Smash 4 and Ultimate, this move was given to Oshawa instead. This situation is very similar to the Chikorita Snivy one we mentioned back in Melee, but I'm actually going to take the opposite opinion here and say I think Piplup should have stayed. While Snivy is definitely more liked than Chikorita, I'm pretty sure Piplup is the more popular Pokemon between it and Oshawa. On top of that, since Snivy is taking Chikorita's place, that means we would now have two two Gen 5 starters, which is a bit less diverse. So in the next Smash game, I'd keep Snivy, but change Oshawa back to Piplup. No hate to Oshawa, I quite like him in fact, I just think Piplup makes more sense. Bonsley is another Pokemon that just uses Tackle, however he's actually very unique. If you saw my cut items video, you would know that you can actually pick up this Pokemon and throw it at people. Bonsley isn't a normal item though, as you have to carry him like a crate, meaning your mobility is limited. That's a pretty interesting gimmick though, and I'd be more than fine seeing it return. Yep, Pukumuku has kind of taken its spot as the pick up and throw Pokemon, but their mechanics are different enough to where I think both could work. Munchlax sucks. Yeah, he uses the move pickup, which means all he does is eat items off the ground. That's right, he does no damage whatsoever. I think Munchlax was a popular Pokemon at the time, so his inclusion is fair, but yeah, he doesn't need to be there anymore. Especially since Snorlax has always been in and is way better. Weavile, on the other hand, is a really interesting Pokemon. They'll use False Swipe several times to stun opponents. This won't deal any knockback, but a stun is good enough to deal some major damage yourself. I really just like how this was implemented, since False Swipe's whole gimmick in Pokemon is that it can never KO, only ever leaving opponents at 1 HP. Making it a stun move makes a ton of sense, so I'm very happy about how it was added. I'm not really sure why Weavile was cut, so a return is definitely more than possible. And our final Pokemon from Brawl is Manaphy. It will use Heart Swap, which will temporarily swap who's controlling what character. That is a really unique gimmick that's unlike anything we've ever seen. Now no, you can't just jump off as your opponent to win, this makes you keep your percent in stocks. So think of this more as the character you're playing as transforming into your opponents. While this is a really interesting gimmick that I'd enjoy seeing come back a lot, I'm guessing it was probably a bit too complicated for either Smash 3DS or 8-player Smash. Considering the Ice Climbers had to be cut entirely from Smash 4 due to the 3DS version, I imagine Manaphy also gave the developers some trouble. But now that we're through the Pokemon for Brawl, I just have to say, every single Gen 4 Pokemon Brawl added was cut in Smash 4. Smash 4 did luckily add a few more from that generation, but none from here survived. We're not done with Brawl though, remember how there's a whole other half of this video? Yeah, we've been talking about Pokemon for so long that I wouldn't be shocked if some people forgot we're also here to cover cut assist trophies. Brawl was the first game to have assist trophies at all, so that's why it's taken us so long to get here. We've got 12 assist trophies that were cut from Brawl, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First is Barbara, who comes from Jam with the Band. She'll do a few strums on her guitar that'll deal some damage. Not really the most interesting assist trophy, but since there's no one else from Jam with the Band in Ultimate, sure, she can come back. A character I think would be more interesting though are the Excite Bikes. These are from you'll never guess it, and it will have a ton of Excite Bike racers riding along the stage, obviously damaging anyone they contact. Excite Bike is a fairly well-known NES title, so I think bringing them back is totally fair. I mean, it got a racetrack in Mario Kart 8, so it's certainly not forgotten. I'm assuming it was cut because of Smash 3DS once again, as this does spawn quite a few racers, though that's no more than a guess. Hellerin from that is certainly a very interesting assist trophy. This will act as a spinning platform when spawned. It moves incredibly slowly though, and deals a whopping zero damage. I really can't think of a situation where this would be helpful, and I'm assuming Nintendo felt the same way, as it never came back since Brawl. Infantry and Tanks from Nintendo Wars is 
very similar to Excite Bite. It'll spawn in a ton of guys that walk around on the stage to attack anyone nearby. Now funnily enough, these guys did actually reappear in Smash 4, so I'm gonna guess that my 3DS theory about Excite Bike was wrong. Either way, they're both gone now, but if I were to choose, I'd rather get Excite Bike back personally. Jill from Drill Dozer is basically just the drill item. If it sucked. Yeah, she turns around before she can get to the blast zone, so really this just does minor damage and keeps opponents stunned for a moment. I'm guessing she was cut due to her similarities to the drill item, and I'm fine with that. She doesn't need to come back. Katanana from WarioWare are honestly characters I keep forgetting were cut. That's probably because they act nearly identical to Latios and Latias, where they will both fly across the screen to deal damage. I'm assuming they were cut since they don't really need a Pokemon and assist trophy to have the same gimmick, but they were together for two games, so who really knows. Lakitu and Spinies from the Mario series is always one that I found to be a bit strange. They work exactly how you'd expect, with Lakitu throwing down spinies onto the stage. I just don't get why they have to be sprites. Lakitu obviously has a modern look as he's in almost every Mario game and spin-off, so the Super Mario Bros. sprites were very unnecessary. I guess someone at the Nintendo office just felt like being so retro. I'm fine with the cut. There are plenty of Mario assist trophies, but if they were to come back, I wouldn't be sad either. Little Mac from Punch-Out will run across the stage to deal powerful punches to his opponents. Now gee, I wonder why he was cut in Smash 4. This is truly a mystery. Mr. Rece from Animal Crossing is an assist trophy that I actually like quite a bit, even if he's on the more useless end. Just like in the Animal Crossing series, he will not shut up. His text box will take up a large portion of the screen, which can block the vision of the fighters. Like I said, not really helpful, but a very cute concept. He was cut in Smash 4 since they added another Animal Crossing character, but seeing how big the franchise is now, I think they definitely deserve having multiple assist trophies. I'd be happy to see him return. Also, apparently, if you attack him, he can explode. Ray MK3 from Custom Robo will shoot out missiles toward opponents. I just really like how tiny he is. The attacks are nothing special, but it's a cute little robot. I don't really think they need to come back, though. They had the franchise represented well enough with the Mii Fighter costume, so there's no real reason to represent it more over other franchises. Sakia Mamma Mia. <laughs> Saki from Sin and Punishment, just like Katanana, is another one that I always forget didn't survive into Ultimate. They have a few different attacks like shooting from their gun and swinging their sword. I'm not really sure why they were cut, but they're now a Mii Fighter costume in Ultimate, so I think they still have enough representation at least. And our final Brawl Assist trophy is Tingle from The Legend of Zelda. He's one of the most popular characters in the series, so it makes sense that he got an assist trophy. He'll just spawn in a bunch of random effects or items, which I don't think is based on anything he does at all in the main series, but fits him being a bit goofy. These effects include spawning stuff like hammers, giving everyone the curry effect, and so on. Now despite his popularity, his cut does make sense. Zelda has a ton of assist trophies already, and they just added in the moon from Majora's Mask in Ultimate. That would mean three of the Zelda assist trophies were from Majora's Mask if Tinkle stayed, and seeing as he is prominent on the Great Bay stage, his cut is fair. Obviously I wouldn't complain if he stayed though, I mean Majora's Mask is my second favorite Zelda game after all. It, it's not my favorite anymore. Tears of the Kingdom did it. Majora's Mask has been passed. I'm sorry Majora's Mask bros, but Tears of the Kingdom is just too good. And that's it for Brawl, it's time to take a look at our final Smash game, Smash 4. Starting off with a Pokemon, Oh, look, yeah, every single Pokemon that was in Smash 4 is in Ultimate. I guess that makes sense considering Ultimate is so heavily based on Smash 4, but I was still pretty surprised by that. The assist trophy count here is also pretty low, with only 4 not making it, excluding the Brawl ones we mentioned before. First off is Dark Samus, who will be able to shoot up Phazon spikes from the ground along with homing projectiles. A pretty cool assist, but obviously her becoming an Echo Fighter meant its assist trophy self had to be killed. Hey, isn't it kind of sad that the assist trophy had more unique moves than the actual fighter? A Luck Man from the Mega Man series will be able to shoot out lightning towards his opponents. This is a pretty basic assist trophy, so him being replaced is more than fair. Isabel from the Animal Crossing series will kick fruit towards the person who spawned her in, killing them in the process. While this was a cute way to implement Isabel's helpful nature from the series, her becoming a fighter was inevitable, so her assist trophy had to be sacrificed. But our final cut assist trophy for this video is Magnus from the Kid Icarus franchise. He's got a big club that he swings around to deal a ton of damage. Out of every cut from Smash 4, this is the one that makes the least sense to me. He didn't become a fighter, nor did his franchise get a new assist trophy in his place. Maybe it was because the Black Knight from Fire Emblem was added in Ultimate, and also as a big sword. That's my best guess anyway. While I definitely think the Black Knight is much cooler, I'd totally be fine for Magnus to return in the next Smash game. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you really hate Metagross and wish he was a cut Pokemon? Let me know in the comments. This was probably my favorite cut video to research so far, because I definitely had the least knowledge on these guys beforehand. I hope this look back at all the cut characters was interesting. Feel free to comment if you have any other good ideas for cut videos in the future. Currently, I plan on doing cut moves and cut taunts sometime in the future, so hopefully you look forward to those. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.